What's up everyone in Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube land, this is Jesse Byrne representing Team FTK and today I'm doing a guest upload on the Creative Duelist channel. He's an amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! Tuber and we've decided to collaborate once again. So here I am to show you guys my pure Yosinju deck. So I don't play Card of Demise in this list and that's only because I don't own the card as of this moment. But I'm going to be picking it up soon so I wanted to show you guys what to play if you don't own Card of Demise. And that's what a lot of what we do on my channel is to show budget options as well as to show unique rogue decks and do all kinds of just different anti-meta decks and different play styles and discussion videos. So if you guys like what you see, make sure to check out the link down below and check out Team FTK. Alright guys, so here's the list. Once again, big shout outs to the Creative Duelist for letting me post on his channel. So starting off, I play three... Comma ones. He's the main bouncer of the deck. If you control another Yosinju monster, you get to target a card on your opponent's side of the field and bounce it back to the hand, which is really good. And then all Yosinjus have the inherent effect of if you normal summon a Yosinju, you get an additional normal summon of a Yosinju monster. And then I play two number twos. Uh, this card's really good because you can attack directly for half of his attack, which starts to become a lot with Tanky boosting them up for 100 damage, but... I don't really like playing 3 because I believe it's a bit cloggy because his effect is good but it's not great so I'm happy playing 2. And then 3, number 3, so Yosinju comma 3, whenever Yosinju does battle damage you get to search for another Yosinju card so it's really good just to be able to have him on field with comma 1 or comma 2 and do damage and get to search for another Yosinju. And then we play the one Sujik. What he does is he's basically like an honest during damage step. You can discard him from hand to make a Yosinji monster gain a thousand attack, which is really good. Also, if he's on field, you target another Yosinji monster and pump it up by a thousand. So it's really good to get over a lot of things. And then for the spells is three fire formation tanky to search out your beast warriors. Three pot of duality. And then one Upstart Goblin. These are your consistency cards. Honestly, if you have Card of Demise, find a way to squeeze it in. But if you're not going to play Card of Demise, just play these seven cards for consistency factor because it's a really good substitute. You have to play Tanky and then Duality and Upstart is really good. And 1,000 damage isn't anything because you basically pick that off all the time. Then I play two Called by the Grave. Called by the Grave is like the best card right now in my opinion in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because everybody's running hand traps. And this gets around so many different decks and banishes so many different combo pieces. That I believe that it's more broken to play this than to play hand traps sometimes. Because you can get over the, the Ash Blossom. You can get over the Effect Veiler. You can get over Ghost Ogre. Any cards that stop you from making your Yosinju plays. That's why I play two Called by the Graves. Then I play one Dark Hole, one Regeki, and then the card that makes Dark Hole and Regeki broken is Dimensional Fissure. Because if you have Dimensional Fissure on board at the same time that you have Dark Hole and Regeki, you just play Dark Hole and then you basically banish all of your opponent's monsters because you have the Dimensional Fissure on board. Then three Drowning Mirror Forces. This card is really amazing in Yosinju's because you never control any Yosinju monsters. Three Torrential Tributes, same reason you don't control any Yosin Yosinji monsters because they all bounce back to your hand during end phase. So that's why we play three Drowning and three Torrential. Then three Rivalry of the Warlord, this is hands down the best floodgate this format. You can also say Gozen Match is good as well, so either one that you want to run, Gozen Match or Rivalry, they're basically both the same to me. And I like Rivalry better just because of the artwork, honestly, and it's really fun to play. Then two Lose One Turn. Lose One Turn is the skill drain of the deck. Two Anti-Spell Fragrance. This hits Trick Stars, this hits Sky Strikers, it hits basically everything. So Anti-Spell Fragrance is a must, and you run a lot more traps than you do spells. And I've always had the mindset of Yosinju's that as long as you're slowing your opponent down, it doesn't matter as much as you slow yourself down because if you top deck a Yosinju monster, you're always at the advantage over your opponent. And then two heavy Storm Duster. 
This card is really busted, and I was playing Cosmic Cyclone before, but I feel like paying life this format isn't that great. And also, if you're going to pay life, you should probably just play Solemns. So for getting rid of spells and traps, that's why I play the two Dusters. Then speaking of Solemns, I play two Strikes, one Warning, and one Judgment. Honestly, if I had Card of Demise, I would cut out these three right here, and I would just play the one Judgment, because paying life points hurts this format, and I would rather get to my Floodgates faster. So that's it for the main deck. Moving on to the extra deck, I were one Grand Fly. He's really good because he pumps up all the Wind Monsters by 500 attack, and he makes all Earth Monsters lose 500 attack. So it works out really well just because sometimes you can use the Great Fly to pump up your Wind Monsters, and that's why we play them. And then I play two Lightning Shidori. Sometimes one isn't enough, so you have to play two, and it's really good for Wind Monsters and to get over a lot of shit. Then we play one Bambuska. The Utopia package, then Giant Hand, Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon, Gaga Ga Cowboy, and the whole Nightmare Engine right here as well. So you're never really going to make these, and you're probably never really going to go into the extra deck that often. The only time I honestly ever go into the extra deck is to either make the Utopia package right here, to make the Harpies uh, Pet Dragon and then Bambuska is honestly and then Lightning Chidori is honestly the only reason why you have an extra deck other than that you don't really need to run anything else it's all personal preference so that this was Jesse Byrne represent Team FTK make sure to like comment subscribe on this video make sure to also check out Team FTK and subscribe to us and make sure to keep subscribing to the creative duelist he's an amazing youtuber and i'd like to say thank you once again for letting me post on your channel this is jesse burnt out